Okay, I'm going to show you how to do what I call a half and half sock, and what that means is you're going to have um, a sole that has an entirely different color than the upper part of the sock. And I'm going to kind of do this from beginning to end, and I'm going to actually be doing it toddler size for a size 5 to 6 um, toddler shoe or um, foot. Okay, and my measurements are going to be based off of 5.75 to 6 inch with a 5.25 length. Um, I'm going to be using the Elise. I'm going to be using two strands. I'm going to be starting off, it looks like a red probably in the camera, it's actually a fuchsia. And my sole is going to be done in the black. But we need to get started with our... Um, our main color which is this now you can do this as any size this is just a guideline okay and um, you make your sock like you normally would and when you get to these areas you change up your color so you already make socks for yourself you can do this this is just showing you how to go about doing a half and half all right so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ear up cast on and I'm going to do a cuff down okay and I'm going to do a rib stitch and I'm working on a 36 peg loom and what I believe I'll do is a um, 3 by 3 since it's divisible by 6 so I'm going to knit 3 And pearl two. Um, I'm going to do this mean and pearl three. Excuse me, all the way around, and that should be my rib stitch. So I'm going to do a rib stitching for I think three inches, and for my rows per inch on this, I think I calculated eleven, and so I'm going to do um, thirty-three rows of a 3 by 3 rib stitch and then we'll come back and then we'll start working on our sole. So go ahead and get your cuff done. No matter what sock you're doing, go ahead and get your cuff done and then I will show you how to go about doing the bottom of the sole in a different color than the top. Okay, and it's not difficult and um, you'll just be showing how to do a half and half color thing on the loom. All right, so pause the video, get your cuff done, and then we will move on from there. Okay, I have done 33 rows, which should be three inches of a rib stitch, and now I am ready to be starting on my heel. All right, and I'm fixing to be changing over to a black. So the entire heel will be done in black, but then you'll want to do your arch half in black and half in the fuchsia color, or however two colors you're using. Okay, so, I have my mold for what I'm using. Um, I am working my 36 pegs, so um, my doing my basic math for figuring out my heel, divide that in half, which is 18, divide that by 3, and I believe that is 6. Okay, so um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be decreasing down to 6 single stitches, okay? So what I am going to do is attach my black color. All right. So the whole heel is going to be done in one color, and the whole toe is going to be done in one color. Now the closure will be a little fun because you are working in two colors. I'm going to work that to the base, and then I'm going to half knot one more time. Okay, now, I'm now going to go in and I'm going to work my heels, so I'm going to do, um, I believe I'm going to do standard wrap and turn, so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. At this point, I'm going to wrap and turn peg 
18. Okay. Now I'm going to knit my way over and I'm going to wrap and turn my first peg. And I'm going to show you this a couple of times. I'm going to tell you to pause the video and decrease your way down to six single stitches in the middle of your wraps and turns, okay? So we're going to knit our way back over. And we're going to wrap and turn. And then we're going to knit our way over. And we're going to wrap and turn that next. And again, your entire heel is going to be done in um, the black. And basically, this half of the loom is going to be black, and the other half is going to be fuchsia. All right, so we get to just before our last wrap and turn, which is here. We're going to wrap and turn, and then we're going to knit our way over. I'm going to show you one more wrap and turn, then release you to go do your decreasing. Okay. Alright, there's just before our last wrap and turn. So wrap and turn. And knit your way over. Alright, so pause the video, get your decrease down, and then we will go from there. Okay, I've decreased down, so I should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six single stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And six wraps and turns. Now we're going to increase. Okay, and what I'm going to do is start with the peg I finished with, knit over six, knit two together. Then start with the peg I finished with, knit seven. knit two stitches together, okay? And then knit eight, knit two stitches together. I'll show you the next couple of increases and then I'm going to tell you to go in and finish up. And there's my next increase, so knit those two stitches together. And then and knit two stitches together. All right, go ahead and pause the video and get all your wraps and turns um, added back in. And I'll show you how I intend on doing this last one so that, because normally I'll wrap it and turn it um, a crossover that beginning and ending points to keep a hole from going, but I'm going to show you a trick. All right. So pause the video, get your increases done, and then we'll come back and work, um, start working the half and half. We're ready to finish up the heel. You can kind of see I'm starting to get a half and half there already. Okay. So, um, what I want to do is I want to go in and knit the last wrap and turn together on this side. There's one more on the other side. And normally to complete it, I would wrap and turn, but I don't want to do that. What I want to do is take the black up under that pink and over, okay? And I'm going to knit my way around. And I'll go ahead and knit over my wrap and turn and stop and work over my fuchsia color. So knit my way around, knit those two stitches together. All right. I'm going to come over here and pick up my fuchsia color and knit my way around. Okay. Okay. 
And what this is, is the completed row for the heel and the point where you'll be starting your half and half. All right. And this will basically, when you work your way back this way on both colors, it's going to be considered row one. Okay. All right, we've worked our way over. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to take your black color up under that pink and over. And you'll want to do that every time. Okay. And um, if you feel like you're getting tangled, you just twist the loom until it's untangled. But I don't find when I consistently go and um, flip, send the same color under and over the other color consistently that I have that problem, okay? Um, I just find I don't. So I'm knitting that way over. And this is going to be like row one to your end step, okay? When you go around and you pick up your pink and you work your way around, this is going to be row one to your instep area, which I need to go over how you want to calculate your instep. Okay, so we're going to go over that real quick. Okay, so you've already started to do your half and half business. All right. Okay, so we need to calculate up our um, length, okay? And so um, typically where you're is starting to see the decrease on that little pinky toe, you'll measure it from there, and then you'll measure it to um, in here somewhere. If that makes any sense, you'll measure it in here. So I say three and a half inches um, so three and a half inches is my length and what I'll need to do is um, calculate that up for 11 and do the number of rows so um, what that's let's see 33 so that's like 38 stitches, 38, 40 stitches. I would say round up and do 40. I think it ends up being like 38 and some. Um, but I would say round up and do 40. Okay, so I'm going to do 40 rows. Give it a little extra length. It's not going to hurt for a kid. Okay, but that's generally how you work it up. All right, so we got our length and we've done row one. Now I would suggest getting you a row counter. Okay and getting your counter to zero and say that you've already done one, one row, okay, which is back. Now I'm going to show you what two rows looks like. Okay, again, you're going to take your black up under your pink and over and you're going to knit your way around. Okay, then you're going to pick up your pink and work your way over. Okay, now you know you've done a second row, so you're going to need to take your stitch mark, a uh, stitch, a uh, row counter, and put it up to two. All right, again, here's how it works. Send your black yarn under and over and work your way around okay then go to the other side now here's where you can also um, start getting twisted if you go in the same direction if you go back the direction you came and knit your way around um, what you'll find is you don't have the uh, twirly twirly thing going on either okay so that's how I kind of keep it straight. 
once I get one half, I go right back the direction I came from so that I don't have the twist going on. Okay, and this will be row three. All right. So you should be getting an idea of how this is going. So that should be row three. Okay, so um, when you get over to here with both colors, that counts as a row. When you get over to here, both colors, that counts as a row. All right. And again, um, you take the black up under the pink and over. Alright, then knit your way around. Okay, then I go back the direction I came, pushing my loops down. I pick up my pink, okay, and then knit my way over. And that counts as row four. Okay, now I'm going to take that, okay, and I'm going to take the black yarn up under the pink and over. And I'm still getting a single cross over. I'm not getting a double, all right? And when you do that, when you start working with the same color, first and then the other color and then you constantly go back the other direction you keep your twisting action to only about one crossover okay and that keeps you from getting all twisted up and everything so um, always do your one color this first all the time and then come back the direction you came pushing the pegs down pick up the other color work it around and then do the same method where the same color always crosses up underneath and over the same the other color okay when you do this method you don't get all the crossing over and getting your yarn in a tangled knot because I'm actually working four skeins here in order to do this okay and that can be a mess so follow this method where it's the same color that always goes under and over and it's the same color you always start with and when you come over to here make sure that you push them down and come back the direction you came rather than going all the way around and coming and picking it up okay and then you do that on this one and you um you keep it from getting all tangled okay it's like i don't have a tangle right now you haven't seen me do a whole bunch of twisting and and everything like that okay so um go ahead and pause the video and get your rows done with whatever sock you're doing because it doesn't matter this is just a technique of how to do a half and half sock where the sole is a different color than the upper part of the sock all right so that's the technique um, and I'll show you how to finish up a toe so you can do this with any sock you want um, so you do however many rows your length is and for me it's going to be 40 rows all right, and then I'm going to show you how to do the toe and closure. All right, so pause the video, get your length done, and we'll come back and do the toe. I have finished my 40 rows, as you can see, and I have a half and half going. Now I'm to the toe. You can do one of two options. You can do all of the toe in the black, and then do a Kitchener bind off, or you can work the pink area down first by decreasing, putting last stitches onto a um, onto stitch markers, and then decrease this side. And as you're decreasing, adding in your chains from this side and close the toe that way so that the top half still remains the same color and the bottom half remains the same color. Because the black toe is the easiest thing to do where you just work your toe down like you did your heel, you do your toe just like you did your heel, and you kitchen or bind off, um, where you'd move them over and kitchen or bind off. That's fairly easy, so um, I'm gonna leave it to where you could do that.
I'm going to show you an alternative method that is going to be a little different, but it'll keep the top all pink and the bottom all black. All right. So here's how that's going to work. I am going to take my pink. Okay. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and weave and toss so that stays put. All right. I'm going to go ahead and decrease my pink. All right. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to knit your way over to your pink section. And this is going to be a different type of toe closure. I've not um, done this before. I've not shown this before. I know what I'm doing, um, but it'll be a little different, okay? It's not bad. It's just going to be different. All right. Now we've knitted our way over. And what we want to do is we want to create a chain along our decreases. So we're not actually going to be able to touch that stitch. But what we want to do is we want to move the next stitch over to decrease that way and then move this stitch over. Okay. Then you're going to slip that stitch, knit these two together, and knit your way over to the other side. All right. And that's kind of like a wrap and turn, but you're decreasing down. Now you could do this the same on both sides and just sew up the toe. That might be easy, but I'm going to do a trick where there is minimal sew up. Okay. I'm going to be doing six stitches with a Kitchener. Okay. So we're going to decrease. We're going to decrease this stitch over. Then we're going to move this stitch over. All right. Snug that up. Slip that first stitch and knit two together. And then knit your way to the end as you do this. Okay. And what you're trying to do is get down to a total of six stitches left. All right. Okay. Again, you move to the next stitch, you decrease over, then move that end stitch over one, and then you lightly tug it. And that tightens up the stitch a little. And you slip that first stitch and you knit two together. And knit your way over to the other side. Now you're going to continue doing this until you have a total of six stitches left. Okay, I mean that is all you have left in your pink section is six total stitches. All right, so I'm going to show you decrease one more time and then I tell you to pause the video and get your stitches down to six. So move that stitch over one, then move this stitch over to that empty peg, slip and knit the two together. Okay. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to pause the video and get it decreased down to six stitches and then we will go from there. This could be construed as a decrease modular toe, I guess. Um, a drawstring kind of modular toe kind of concept. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and get these stitches down to six, and then we will go on to progress for the um, other side. Okay, I had decreased down to six stitches, and I have already put them on a um, stitch holder. Okay, and I don't think it's really going to matter which way because you're just going to be placing them nice and neatly right back on and it's just six stitches you're messing with. So um, I placed those stitches on a stitch holder 
and I've just decreased. All right. So what I want to do is um, knit my way around to the other side. Okay. And before you reach the last peg, what you want to do is add a chain from your pink side to that end stitch. Okay. So here's our last stitch. And what you want to do is you want to find the first chain, which is that right there. Okay. And you want to place it like you're laying it on top of the other side. And you want to get both sides of the chain because you don't want any holes showing up in your toe. Okay. See? So as you can see, it looks like I'm laying it on top. All right. Now, what you want to do with that is you want to purl those two stitches together. All right. So you're going to go in, you're going to purl those two stitches together. All right. You will still do your decrease. And then you will slip that first stitch, knit the two stitches together, and knit your way over and stop just before the last stitch. Okay. Okay, we're stopping just before that last stitch. And then what we want to do is we want to find our first chain, which is right there. We want to place it onto the peg. You can do half a chain at the time or try to do the full chain, but you want to get the full chain on there. Okay. Then you're going to purl the stitches together. Okay, I'm going to slip it and knit your way to just before, oh, wait a second, sorry, don't forget your decrease. Still got a decrease as you move along, okay. So, you, skip, you don't move that one, you move the next one over, trying to keep it even on both sides. And you're going to slip that first stitch, knit those two stitches together, and knit your way over to just before the last stitch. And then you're going to add a chain. And um, I'll show you this two more times, and then tell you to go in and add all your chains and decrease down to six. Okay, so I'm going to stop just before my last stitch, and I'm going to hunt down my next chain, which is right here, and I'm going to place it onto this pick. Okay, I'm going to pick up my working yarn, and I'm going to purl those two stitches together. Then I'm going to do my decrease. And I'm going to slip it, knit those two stitches together. And knit your way over. Now if you're using a long loom, and you had two wedges you could work with, you could actually be decreasing and um, still doing your weaving bits without having to do this. So, okay. So we're gonna stop there and we're gonna add in our next chain, which is right there. Okay. 
Okay. Then we're going to knit the two stitches. I mean, we're going to purl the two stitches together. Okay. And we're going to decrease. Move that end stitch over, slip it, and knit to just before your last stitch. So go ahead and pause the video and get all your chains back on and try to get your black down to six stitches so that you can do a Kitchener um, bind off. Okay. So pause the video and get your um, chains added and decreases done. Okay, and then I'll show you how to finish up this toe. Okay, as you can see, we've decreased our way down to six. You have your sides connected, nice and pretty. And now it's time to add these six stitches back to the loom. All right. And so we're going to try and make sure that they're not going to be. Oh, I gotta find my end, my tail. There we go. Make sure my tails are all out of the way. Okay. No. What we want to do is we want to go in and we want to add these stitches back to the loom. Let me pull that out. Okay. And you want to place it back on there. And place it back on there. Okay. Grab it, place it back on the limb, and if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can leave, um, you still have to pick up the stitches, but instead of trying to put them back on the limb, you can just draw string all these stitches together if you'd like. Okay. So um, there's my last stitch, place it onto the limb, and there you have your stitches on the loom. Now I'm going to go in and do a Kitchener, but there is your side, and that's a really clean way of doing that, and you can just, you know, after you add them back on, you can just drawstring it together if you want, but I find that a Kitchener weave looks the best. So I'm going to kind of cut me more of um, a longer tail so I can Kitchener weave that short area, which isn't much. I'm not going to give myself a huge amount of tail, but I'm going to weave me in, and I can do this without a needle actually. Okay, so if you've done my Kitchener, this is a good place to actually kind of be able to work because it's just so few stitches. So typically it's a knit, knit, purl, purl. So you're going to send it through like a knit on that bottom. Then you're going to send it through like a, um, like a knit on that top. You may have to come in and snug up this tail that you'll be weaving in, okay? All right. Then what you want to do is go to the top next stitch and send it through like a purl. Then you want to go to the previous bottom peg and send it through like a purl. Now, 
then you want to go in and start over again because that's your set. So what you want to do is you want to send it through like a knit on the bottom. Then um, there's a specific way. You don't want to be intercrossings, which can be confusing. So make sure that the working yarn is on this side when you stick the hook up and pull it through for your top knit. Okay. Then you'll go in and you'll purl that bottom, send it through. And the, um, I always find the pearl on the previous bottom peg can be a bit of a pain. And um, so what you want to do is um, take and send it through like this because you don't want it to come up on the other side okay there's there's two sides okay you want it to come through here you don't want it to come up through here all right and if that makes any sense I hope it does you can do this with a needle um, I've shown it with a needle and I've shown it with a hook and so you know it's usually whatever my moods in okay so you're going to continue this process of Send it through like a knit on that bottom. Stitch. So your knit knits are on the same peg and your purl purl is top and bottom of different pegs. Okay. So we're going to go to the next peg and we're going to Send it through like a pearl. Then we gotta come back to the previous and send it through like a pearl. And you can tighten it up as you go along. So I've been going in and tightening up as I go along. So if you tighten up as you go along, when you go to release the stitches, they have a nice um, already balance to them. All right. So now we're done with that. We want to, of course, knit, knit pearl and you want to go back to that previous peg and I think it's easier with a needle but I'm showing you how to do it with a hook anyway and it might be hard to see because I'm dealing with black so um, you'll just have to go and look at the Kitchener on my other videos. But you can do a Kitchener or you can do a drawstring. It's entirely up to you. It depends on your mood. If you want to do something that's simple rather than something that's tedious, as I always say, it's whatever floats your boat. Um, things work better for other people and I think that that is what matters. Okay. All right, so it's time to do the knit knit. We're almost done. And what you're doing is, um, like I'm explaining it for this sock, but what you're doing is um, you're getting it down to your number B. Okay, you're decreasing it down to your number B. And... Um, on both sides okay so the numbers already calculated you follow the same procedure on your on your decreasing that you um, normally would okay so just so you know you follow your same process of decreasing 
as you normally would doing a short row toe. All right. There's nothing um, massive calculating about it because you're decreasing. You're just decreasing it a little differently. Okay. So we're going to knit and knit. And you just keep the process going until you cannot do the process at any anymore. Anymore. Okay. So here's that. Okay. Now I like to go in and make sure everything's all nice and tightened. So that everything looks good. Okay. And I go in and I gently take everything off. Okay. Now you will need to go in and weave these in. Okay, I'll send them through the inside of the sock and weave them in. But there is your toe. And you see that the side is really clean and neat. Just like the rest of the sock. Okay. And that is how you make a half and half sock with a, um, I guess you could say a drawstring toe done in the flat, but it's kind of like a modular toe. And that you do one half and then you do the other half. And that would be an easier way if you wanted to do a stitch pattern all the way to the toe and then just do regular. Um, it, 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 it leaves up to a versatile toe. And actually that's the first time I've done that and um, I'm showing you that. Um, so add as an option. Now you can just go ahead and do the toe. And so you'll have a black line in here and then just do a Kitchener bind off or you can um, do a bind off and then um, whip stitch close. So it's going to be kind of obvious and it's not going to be quite as clean. Or you can do the method I just showed you and instead of doing the Kitchener, you just drawstring it together. Okay, you just drawstring all of them together and that'll get you that as well. So there you go. That is how you do a half and half sock.